to their environment. At that stage, which is really the end stage of the disease, the occupational therapist role is different than uh, setting up activity programs or providing a rehabilitative function. Uh, the role of the occupational therapist is really part of you know, a palliative care approach, and that is to make sure that the person is situated in a way, pos you know, positioned in a way that they um, are comfortable and can um, you know, prevent bed sores and other kinds of, of negative consequences of, of being bed bound. So the occupational therapy still has a role at the end stage of the disease, but it's obviously uh, part of a team that's providing comfort care. Occupational therapists work, can work with both informal and formal caregivers in a consultative capacity. So they're not doing hands-on treatment as much as serving as a, a coach or a consultant to work with the family member in particular or even the formal provider to problem solve what are the triggers in the environment we routinely find that both formal pro caregivers and informal caregivers ha use an overly complex speech pattern with someone with dementia. And as the disease progresses, for example, using open-ended questions, abstract pronouns are not effective and can really be very confusing to the person with dementia. And so helping and retraining the caregiver to speak in a way that supports that person's uh, functioning and ability to process information uh, is critical to the way in which we have worked with both formal providers and uh, family caregivers. Some of those activities that we teach our caregivers would be, um, again, looking at the environment. What can we change in the environment to support the person with dementia so that they're less confused, uh, that they pick up on some cues to enable them to do that activity. Um, what are things in the environment that will make that individual safer? That's important. Um, one in that environment, that physical environment, um, needs to be removed because it's a trigger of a problematic behavior for the client. Certainly they want to maintain their independence as much as possible, even though they're not in their traditional home. So things such as being able to take care of themselves uh, as much as possible, whether it's going into the bathroom, doing their daily activities in the morning, self-care, self-feeding, etc. Uh, it's important to them. They, they want to be as independent as possible. Occupational therapy offers these residents um, uh, strategies and perhaps adaptations they can use to be as independent as possible. Um, also being safe in their new environment uh, and inf as efficient as possible in, in their day-to-day -day activities. So we really take a look at, it's very holistic, we take a look at this individual, the roles that they have in the nursing home, what they'd like to do, what they have to do, and we enable them to do those activities. That's a typical self-care occupational therapy program. One of the clients that I worked with in a long-term facility um, was having difficulties with eating. And the, his care providers said, you know, he's just not eating. He doesn't want to eat. Um, he's not getting his nutrition in. After careful evaluation and seeing what was really going on here, um, I noticed that this individual really had difficulty initiating the action of feeding himself. It wasn't that he didn't want to eat. He just had difficulty getting started because of the dementia. So after setting up the environment very carefully, providing only um, a limited amount of uh, feeding utensils and tools in front of him, and guiding him by uh, what we call hand-over-hand -hand assistance to get him started to feed himself, he was capable of feeding himself. 
The nurses were surprised. They had no idea he could actually feed himself because they had been feeding him all along. But with the right feeding utensils, the right cueing, the right setup, this individual was able to begin to feed himself a good 75% of the meal. That was the quite a success. And it allowed the caregivers to see that occupational therapy can make a big difference in, in an everyday task. I think one of the biggest misunderstandings about occupational therapy is its name. So when people hear occupation, they think, well, that, you know, you only go to an occupational therapist if you have a problem at work. And uh, that's unfortunate because uh, that's just not the case. I mean, occupational therapy uh, is a very important part of the care management of older adults with physical frailty and uh, people with dementia and their family caregivers. What we mean by occupation, though, is those everyday activities that are meaningful, that clients uh, must do or need to do or want to do in order to get through the day, whether it's getting up in the morning out of a bed, um, whether it's um, taking care of yourself, being able to get into the shower, bathe safely and efficiently, um, despite the stroke or despite um, a hip fracture. Um, it can be tricky and challenging for our clients. So I think the occupational therapist offers techniques, strategies, um, equipment to make those daily occupations a little easier. I think that when someone is given the diagnosis of dementia, whether that's early stage, uh, moderate, or severe, that, the, that there should be a consultation with an occupational therapist, that they really should be brought in um, immediately. And so I think that it's up to you know, physicians to make that referral, uh, neuropsychologists uh, to say to the family member, you would really benefit from having an occupational therapist come out to your home and work with you to help you learn what your family member can do, what they can't do, and how to give you the skills that uh, will benefit uh, you as you, you know, um, engage in your caregiving. You know, I really want to see occupational therapists right up there with that, um, you know, diagnosis, and that as well as with the progression of the disease, that as families or doctors or other providers see changes in the person with dementia and there's concern for the person's safety, that if they see a decline in their functioning, if they uh, see certain behaviors occurring, again, that that would automatically trigger a referral to an occupational therapist uh, because they are really key to addressing uh, safety, function, and behavioral issues as well as helping families uh, move through one of the most devastating conditions.